Hello YouTube friends. Hi. Anna and I are here this morning to carry on working on our two quilts here. Now you've just seen me pinning this one out and Anna ironing this one. Yeah. Well done. I know, can you believe it? Tell us what you think about it now. I, it, it has been a, a very interesting <laughs> experience. <laughs> I really, really enjoyed making it. It's been quite stressful at times. Okay, explain those two things, interesting and stressful. Um, well, so I tried to do quite a lot of it, as the last video finished, it was me at home, yes. sewing it together. And because I've been wanting to do um, quite a lot of this myself, yeah. in like quite a, like, I can do this. I kind can of a... do this kind of way. I don't need help. <laughs> exactly. <coughs> and then um, I thought it gone horribly, horribly wrong. So I did the the webbing. Oh, the webbing part. Yeah, there yeah. were a couple of FaceTimes about the webbing. Yeah, but then, but then I didn't tell you that I thought I I'd messed it up, did I, for ages? This is true. <laughs> so I I'd, I'd done the webbing, and um, one direction it had gone absolutely fine, and then sewing it together. That what so like so th sewing the second where you fold yeah. the two rows over and sew them to get together. Yeah. You got into a bit of a pickle. Yeah, so I, I I didn't pin them so that they would line up with the ones below. And I think what that resulted in was a, a, quite a delay in this project because you put it back in its box, didn't you? And it was yeah. like, we're not talking about that and then anymore. And Kate would be like, should we do this? Yes, yes, but what about this very important thing that we need to do first? Yeah. <laughs> because I had this heart... Well, I'm sure everyone can relate to this feeling when you kind of think like... I, I in my head it it's like when you don't go to the dentist for ages and you think that you're going to take out all your teeth. Do you know what I mean? And the it dentist was, then says, "Yeah, that's fine. fine. I'll yeah. just give you a quick polish." Yeah, exactly. And that's actually what I did here did as the that. dentist. Yeah. Anna brought this along to me and she and said, "It's rubbish. It's all rubbish. My second quilt will be better." <laughs> so, I thought this is what I thought I was going to have to do. I thought that because it didn't match up, I'd I'd measured it really badly and that they were all going to be different sizes and she thought she was going to have to re-sew all the individual yeah. blocks together it was quite stressful so <laughs> i had a word <laughs> yeah and um we pinned out a couple of rows and i sewed a row yeah i think this is what i'd like to stress to anyone who's a beginner at this or anyone who's learning like you are this is fabric. It's very, very forgiving indeed. Yeah. Now, I've been doing a project over on the Garden <coughs> Channel, which is wood. I mean, I haven't been doing it. Ant's been doing it. But wood's not as forgiving. Mm. You cut two pieces of wood and they're slightly out. You can't yeah. pu pull one and squeeze one in, but you kind of can with fabric. Not yeah. too much so that you get puckers and, and uh, mountain ranges on your quilt. Mm. And, and Anna definitely thought that she had uh, the Himalayas going on, didn't you? That's what I thought. And, it, and it, I guess the kind of confidence that you have with it, I haven't got that yet. So I no. thought... And, and that's completely understandable. Yeah, I thought it was like... And we had a bit of an over. aha moment when yeah. we sewed a few together and ironed them. And it was like, oh, they do look okay. <laughs> I've been so worried about it. And I was talking to Kate about because it's quite interesting. Because... So much of my work now is filming Kate talking about fabric, talking about quilts. I have like all this knowledge, but I'm still a beginner because I've only just started doing it. So I know loads about it's like a weird, like, like knowledge level versus experience level. Okay, that, I think a lot of people can relate to that. Yeah, because every day we're like talking about you know Haskell triangles and jiggly boo and, blah, blah. <laughs> and so I feel like in my head I just ha I, I know all this quilty stuff but the actual practical making a quiltness I've not actually done and so, enough to match up to that so we need to bring those two horses together don't we yeah so that they're both galloping along at the same rate yeah so when something I, like that when I thought I'd messed this up I I, I just I felt so like um, well, she felt a bit defeated very defeated but I don't anymore so I waved my magic wand yeah I just, actually, I don't think I even did that. I just showed you that fabric is forgiving. And now what we've got is this quilt top here. And I really like it. Which I'm really pleased with. And you're yeah. proud of it, aren't you? I am, yeah. I really like it. I think it's going to be like a super summery, you know, when the, when the clocks go forward. forward. I always have to really think about that. The clocks go forward. Whip it out and then... Spring okay. has arrived. Okay. We'll look forward to seeing it then. Yeah. Well, we guess I better get it finished then. Yes. So I've got my terry quilt all pinned out here. 
I haven't even started to quilt it yet. I haven't even thought about how I'm going to quilt it, in fact. It looks so cool with that yes, backing. Yes, I like the backing very much. This is a colour called Shark's Teeth from Brandon Mabley, and I do love it. Yeah, I really love it. And, and there's nothing fancy going on on the back of mine except that one colour, but that's not the case with yours, is it? Um, no, yeah, there's a few different colours on the... Um... So you had lots of bits of fabric left over. Mm-hmm. From your Spoonflower stash. Yeah. We just must thank Spoonflower one more yeah, time. Yeah, thank you so much. Because they've provided all the fabric for this. That's and so um, they've been lovely to deal with as well, haven't they? Yes. Yeah, so I'm friendly. sure they're going to be thrilled to see mm, where we're getting so. to with this. Yeah. So let's see, what have we got here? So these are just the, the leftover bits of fabric that I had and just pinned together in a kind of scrappy kind of a way. I did it at home. The other day and I'm quite pleased with it. Well I think it's beautiful. Thanks. Do you like it? Yeah I do. It's nice and simple. Good. So today what we're going to do then is we're going to pin out Anna's quilt and I've got my big bolt of um, wadding. Mm -hmm. uh, you're happy to use this bamboo and cotton yeah, blend lovely. wadding. It's very thin and got a nice drape to it. Mm -hmm. So my one's enough. ready to, to stitch and we'll get yours, your one to the point where it's ready to stitch now. Okay, okay that's what we'll do next. Perfect. But not until we've had a cup of tea. Ah, yes. Okay. <laughs> so that this is the bit you like. Yeah. But right. well, we're going to put that on and you just go around the other side and smoosh that down. Okay. And make sure it doesn't fall off. Mm -hmm. So keep smooshing. Okay. And at this point, if not before, mm -hmm. I like to think about how I might quilt it. Yeah, I've been thinking about that. And what ideas have you had? Well, at first we talked about doing the stitch in the ditch. And then you were talking, what, t tell them what you were saying the other day about the... Well, there was a, somebody who left a comment, because I stitch mm. in the ditch quite a lot. It's a really uh, mm. brain out of gear thing to do. You just stitch where the sew lines are. Mm -hmm. And so, first of all, why are we quilting this? We're quilting it because we have to sandwich these three layers together. And when you get wadding or batting like this, it will have a recommended interval for quilting mm -hmm. and that's so that when it's finished the quilt wadding doesn't move about inside it's held in place mm -hmm. now some um, recommendations are for eight inches apart six inches apart all mm -hmm. of that now I, I can't actually remember what mine is because I always quilt closer together than it tells you to mm -hmm. that's why we're doing it in the first place I mean yes of course it's going to be decorative and lovely and also a really nice thing to do mm -hmm. But when I'm pinning it out, which we're going to do now, I like to place my pins so that they're not going to be in the way of where my quilt lines are going to go. Mm -hmm. And so if, for instance, um, you were going to quilt, let's say, I don't know what you're going to do, but let's say you were going to quilt a diagonal across the middle of here. That's mm -hmm. one way you could do it. I wouldn't put a pin right there. Mm -hmm. I'd put them off to one side. Yep. So it's just like knowing in your head how you're going to quilt, quilt things. Because one thought I had was following the diagonal mm. along the line, but then was that boring because you can't see it very clearly? Uh, uh, well, the impact of the quilt the quilting is going to make, mm -hmm. um, if you stitch in the ditch, this was the comment that I got uh, from someone when I was stitching Would something. Would that be stitching the ditch? What that I'm would be, because that's the ditch. What they mean yeah. by the ditch is where two fabrics meet together yeah. and there's an obvious line there. I mean, when you get to somewhere like that, you know, I'd tell you what to do about that. <laughs> yeah. But there's an obvious line along here. Mm. And so there's your guide and you can just stitch there. The comment I've, I read was that firstly, this person thought it was hard to stitch in the ditch because a lot of fabrics coming together at the junctions. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Yes, it makes sense. I never find it a problem. Mm -hmm. I just motor on through there. But mm -hmm. the second thing was that, what's the point? Because you, you can barely see it unless you look closely. That was my thought, because it would look lovely on the back, but then on the front you, wouldn't just, you just wouldn't be able to really see yeah. it. And so there's an opportunity then. I mean, I don't mind that. I stitch in the ditch a lot. Mm. Maybe it's lazy. Is that quite <laughs> a lazy thing to do? 
Yeah, no, I don't think so. If you like it. And I do. Mm. I do like it. And I don't mind so much that you can't see the stitches as a, an extra feature. Mm -hmm. So if, like I just suggested, you were to quilt along here, mm -hmm through here you would definitely see your quilt stitches mm -hmm. the whole time and that would it would knock the design into that place mm -hmm. and it's whether or not you want to do that or you want so you could quilt just along here along here mm -hmm. you could quilt along here and then the other al uh, alternative would be a quilt along here and then you can do something completely different mm -hmm. I did this on the seed packet quilt I wonder mm -hmm. if you can remember that far yeah. back yeah, I like where that. I actually stitched around the edges in a sort of grid. I was trying to make yeah, those like blocks look like seed packets. Yeah, yeah, I remember. So I stitched. That and, good. Yes, and so I stitched along at like an inch in or a couple of centimetres in here mm -hmm. and here. And what that gave you then was a little square here mm -hmm. and quilt lines here. So for our purposes now, we're going to pin this out. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's vital that you know now for this okay. part because we can always move the pins. It's not... It's not like they're, you know, we're nailing them in. Yeah. So we'll pin it out now. Mm -hmm. And all the time you're doing that, be thinking about what threads you're going to use to quilt it. Mm -hmm. Whether they're going to be toning threads or matching or completely different. There's another mm -hmm. thing that's going on there. Mm -hmm. Be thinking about that. What were you going to say? Um, if I did them either that way or that way, would I just have to do them in one direction? Well, um... For me, I'd say, um, no. You'd need to do them in both directions. I think we would. So I could do following the stitch following the ditch the and then across. And you could do that, and that would look very stitchy and lovely. Mm. Okay then, so we've put a pin in all of the triangles that are on the table, and we know mm. that they're flat and smooshed and beautiful. It looks so satisfying like this, you doesn't like, it? You like it, a work in progress. Yeah, so we should that. take some pictures. We will. Mm -hmm. Now, though, we're going to get the next part of it ready to pin. Cool. And at the moment, all that is is just floating off the table. Mm -hmm. So we're going to pull it here, and we can be quite safe about pulling it because these mm -hmm. are all beautifully pinned together. So yep. we're going to pull it until everything that we need is on the table. Mm -hmm. And now you've got the opportunity to properly, properly spread this out and make sure that there are no wrinkles anywhere. Yeah. And then pin those last few, but definitely do quite a lot of smooshing mm -hmm. and even a tiny bit of tugging from underneath as well. So get hold of the just a tiny bit and just give it a little tug. No, the just the backing itself. All oh, right, that's it. And then you can be sure then. And then we're just a few more pins, and we're nearly there. Yeah, looking good. I like it. I really do. Have you thought about how you're going to bind it? Have we talked about that? I thought like of all of the colours. Yeah, scrappy. Scrappy, yeah. So we'll put these last few pins in. Yeah. And then we can get on with the hand quilting. <gasps> I can't believe it. Okay then, so it's much later in the day. We're still enjoying the winter sunshine streaming in through the windows. And so we're closing this curtain and opening <laughs> yeah. this curtain. Uh, and we hope that the light will be all right for you guys watching this, but yeah. it's fine for us. Because mm. it's a shame, isn't it, when there's so little light yeah. to actually draw the curtains against it, isn't it? And it's put a, a filming light on. Yeah. Okay then, so um, Anna's all pinned out. I pinned mine out the other day. We've got them both on here. Mm -hmm. We're not going to quilt them on here completely. Anna will take hers home, but we're going to make a start now. Okay, when I do this and I get myself set up for hand quilting, mm -hmm. there's a few things that you need on the table. Mm -hmm. And there's two of us doing this now. <laughs> so we need a nice pair of scissors. I, I like to have a pin cushion to put my needle in mm. because sometimes I'll get the and I'll just stick it in there and then I can't find it. Yeah. So never just stick your needle thinking that you'll remember where it is <laughs> yeah. because it's likely that you won't. Okay. I like to mark out my uh, stitch line with this little uh, clover 
chalk marker. Mm -hmm. I've, I've used many different types of marker and I find this is the best one. Okay. Uh, and uh, I like it very much. I'm also going to suggest that we use beeswax mm -hmm. for uh, to run your threads over. Yeah. Beeswax helps the thread to not tangle. All threads will tangle, mm -hmm. but the beeswax helps it to not tangle. Right. And the other thing that I think it does, and I don't know if I'm making this up, or, but I've noticed, mm -hmm. it kind of beds into the fabric more and doesn't okay. slip. So that makes sense, doesn't it? So we've yeah. got our beeswax, our needles, mm -hmm. our chalk uh, marker here, and a quilting ruler so that we can draw our lines on there and a pair of scissors. Mm -hmm. This little pot here, when you get to a pin mm -hmm. and you take it out, just put it in here. It's just to okay. kind of be uh, a little bit organised. Mm -hmm. And then this is probably the most important pot on the table. <laughs> yeah. uh, and this one is um, sustenance as we're getting going along. Yeah, very and then important. back here, we've got our cups of tea. Indeed. Have I shown you my colour changing mug? <laughs> Several times. <laughs> I think I show it to you every time I use it, don't you I? Do, yeah. It's become my new absolute favourite go to mug because oh, it reminds me that my tea's going a little bit cold and to drink yeah. it before it gets cold. Yeah, that's really good. <laughs> I, th I really love it. Oh, so, good. And so that's here for refueling. Uh huh. And then the next thing we're going to talk about then, Anna, is threads. Yeah. So, um, Kate has picked out some really beautiful Aurifil threads for me to pick from and I kind of like them all. Mm. So I was just saying to Kate, can I use them all? Certainly can. Just look at the two different types of Aurifil you've got there. One on mm -hmm. a wooden bobbin, yeah. which is a stranded cotton, mm -hmm. and then the one on the red bobbin is uh, Aurifil 12. Mm -hmm. which is the, um, it, it's a thicker cotton and it's a, it's what I've been using for quilting since I first discovered it a few years ago mm -hmm. and I like it a lot. I've made a thread box that's in the shop, uh, the yeah. uh, slow stitching thread box. Uh, and I also want to tell you about another really interesting thing that's coming your way in January because these, um, these threads here. I love these ones. I do. They're sort of a matte finish and they're mm. also stranded. So there's six strands on here. Mm -hmm. And Aurifil very kindly invited me to be their um, designer, one of their designers for next year. Very cool. And I designed a thread box using these stranded cottons. Mm -hmm. And I've chosen some lovely colours. Uh, obviously, I like them. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, no, I've I'm, seen them. They're lovely. And I'm hoping that people are going to really enjoy them. And yeah. they'll be available in from January onwards. I'm so excited about them. It was lovely choosing them and designing the box and everything. Mm. So yeah. Anna's got a mixture then of the twelves and the stranded. And how would you do it? With would you be quite like just random with it? it doesn't matter. Yeah, you know me well enough to know now that yeah, I'm utterly random. Yeah. Because if I try and have some sort of system, I'll lose it like a third of the way in, won't I? And so if if you look at the threads that you've got in front of you there, mm -hmm. and you like all of them, then I would say um, use all of them. Cool. So you've got a little basket with yours in. Mm-hmm. And I then, uh, using um, thread, choosing the thread for this quilt, this quilt has got every colour under the sun uh, in it. Now, people who've been here for a little while will, will not be at all surprised to see me holding up this reel of Marrakesh because it's um, quite possibly my favourite of all the threads that Aurifil do. It's very cool. Uh, so, Marrakesh. Uh, it goes through every single colour under the sun and when you put it against the work here, it just disappears. Mm -hmm. The next thing to think about then is how we're going to quilt them. And so if we've got a thinking, a thought about your quilt design now. Yeah, so me and Kate, while we had our lunch, we were having a bit of a chat about it. And Kate gave me all sorts of interesting suggestions. And But I think that, uh, the one that we were talking about earlier is the one I'm going to go with. So stitching in the ditch this way. Along the diagonals of the two sides of the block. Yeah. And then coming back the other way, going across like right that. Right through the middle of the block. Yeah. So I think that looked quite cool. And this way I can practice on this bit 
footage falling the line and then by the time I flip it round then I'll be hopefully a bit straighter so when I do it Excellent. just with the chalk. I think that's a good idea. Yeah, I think that'll look cool. And so I'm going to do something pretty similar on here. These blocks finish at three inches, so your blocks finish at six inches, don't they? Something like that. Yeah. So. <laughs> Never ask me for measurements. Okay, was, were we doing maths temporarily there? Temporarily. It was a bit scary. Okay, we were all right. We, yeah. we backed out of that one. It's okay. So looking at this one then, mm -hmm. I think, um, and I, as I was pinning it out, I was deciding that what I'd quite like to do is sew along the diagonal here. Cool. But in both directions. Oh, like me. Except that these are tiny. <laughs> no, it'll look cool. I think so too. I really do think so. So that's what we're going to do. And we're going to make a start. We'll get a start, both of us on the table. And then when you take yours home, I'll be able to spread mine out. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's stop talking about it. Let's do it. Okay. I think it would be really helpful because, I mean, this is a, like a lot of people watching this might be starting their first quilt as well. If maybe if I could film close up you just showing a quilting stitch for everyone. If you like, I can do that. Would that be alright? Yeah, absolutely. That and by everyone, fun. I also mean me. Yeah, it's been a well, few years since I last did it. <laughs> okay, that would be fine. Okay. And so, um, well, we'll get the cameras reorganised so that Anna can show you how to do that. So, Anna, what I'm going to do here is do a quilt line and having decided I'm going to quilt on the diagonals here I'm going to line up my quilting ruler so that it goes um, through the junction of all of these blocks here. It's quite a busy quilt and so being able to see those is sometimes a bit hard but there they are. Then I'm going to use this chalk marker and this is why I like this one because it leaves a thin line of chalk which you can barely see but it is there and as I'm stitching it it just comes off uh, on my hand and so now I'm going to um, uh, using this um, uh, 12 weight Aurifil Marrakesh which I number one thread for me I'm just going to run it over the beeswax a couple of times like that now you can put a knot in if you like uh, and, you know, I sometimes do, I sometimes don't, because it's going to end up off the quilt edge anyway. So <laughs> you're going to be cutting that off when you do the binding. OK, and now I like to do fairly big quilting stitches. And so, and I also like to make sure I've got my cutting mat underneath me. I mean, if you've got your best dining table, it's very important that you have a cutting mat underneath you. I'm not too bothered about my table, but I do like to have a mat. And I push my needle in until it hits the mat and then bring it up. And then the needle's long enough to get a couple of stitches on. And there we can see that my chalk line's here and I'm just traveling along in this direction. I don't really mind uh, if the stitches are a little bit big. I like how big they are. Uh, I know some people pride themselves on very tiny stitches. My mum's quilt stitches were minute, but um, I don't mind for them being a bit big. When you're at the edge like this, you can pick it up and hold it in your hand. And I know that there are some people who like to quilt on a frame, and I think that's something I'd quite like to try one day, but I never have. And so I quite enjoy quilting like this. And what I'm loving about this variegated yarn is that the different colours show up differently on, uh, uh, on each of the colours, the fabric colours on the block. So you might not be able to see the chalk line, but I can. It's just there, giving me an indication that I'm on the right track. to the end of a run, which I nearly am. And 
just going to stitch off into the edge there and slip my end off. All of these loose ends or knots or whatever you've done will all get caught in the binding when you get to that stage. So it's not hard and practice definitely makes for um, uh, a neater stitch but then I sometimes don't really mind about it not being terribly neat so don't worry about that. So y you need to get to the point where you're actually looking forward to doing it and enjoying it. I am, I already. Great, well in that case keep reminding yourself then to breathe. I will. I've set myself quite a task with this one haven't I? Yeah. It's a big quilt and I'm doing it them every <laughs> two and a half inches. <laughs> it's almost like Agnes's quilt. Do you remember quilting that one? Yeah, I do. It was do epic, remember? that one. Well, it was epic. Is this, am I, have I set myself up for another epic task here? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie, Kate. I think so. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. <laughs> well, it's a few days later now. And we've made some progress at home on our quilts. You've taken yours home and worked on it. I have, yeah, it was fun. How's that gone? Yeah, it was good. I watched the whole of the holiday oh. on Saturday and quilted, which felt very Christmassy. Do you watch the holiday every year? Not last year. I mean, no, I didn't watch it last year. Because I've watched <laughs> it maybe three times in my life, and that's enough. It's not very good. I don't know. I just love Christmas films. <laughs> it's not very good. Was it one of the ones we reviewed last year? Yeah, yeah, it definitely was. It been. But anyway, <laughs> I, I've been working a little bit on my quilt and Anna, you've mm. been working on yours. I have, yeah. And we had this ambition that the end of this video would be our finished bound quilts. Yeah. And Anna said, you can get this done this weekend, can't you, Kate? <laughs> no, I mean, I don't think I was that optimistic. I said you can get it done before the video goes live but the following weekend. What did you find when you took yours home? Well, I was like, oh, I'll totally finish it this weekend. <laughs> and then um, and then it got home and it is, it is slower, slower going than you think it will be. It is slower going. Yeah. That's the part about it that I like. Yes. Uh, that slow, repetitive stitching is part mm. of what I love about this. Yeah. And um, and if you're in a hurry, then maybe don't do it like this. No. Uh, and so... <laughs> but you're enjoying doing it? Oh, very much. It's very satisfying, isn't it? Yes, it's very satisfying. And so the interval that I've chosen uh, here mm -hmm. is only about just over two inches. Okay. And your, the interval on yours is more like six. Yeah, yeah. I'm and so you, yours is going a bit quicker. And so you've almost finished all the one direction diagonals on yours I have, yeah. and then you're going to come the other way and quilt it the other way yeah well, I'm no be way a bit slower because I have to draw the lines in. I'm not having to draw the lines in a minute <laughs> well that's going to add ooh, a good five minutes isn't it <laughs> yeah I do like stitching the ditch though it's got to be said okay talk about fun. that which is so easy isn't it just, don't have to think do yeah. you yeah don't have to draw any lines in just like boop, 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 nice and straight <laughs> Yeah, I'm a fan. Oh. And so I'm doing the diagonal across the middle of these blocks and then coming the other way it'll be across the middle as well. Yeah. And so this is this is going to take quite a few sessions. It is. Quite a few more Christmas movies, I think. <laughs> yeah, hopefully better ones than, than the holiday. Well, whatever I end up <laughs> watching or listening to. Yeah. I like having it here on the table so that when I've got a spare half hour I can just come and sit down and do a little bit of this. That's great. Yeah, that's how I set mine up. Yeah. Uh, so you're doing yours in, on your kitchen table at home? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it's good, isn't Quite it? tea. So what Very I'd nice. say then, that our ambition to get two finished quilts to show you here for this video, yeah. um, we're way off being with that. Yeah. Uh, I kind of knew we, we would be really, but... Um, yeah. I think if we weren't trying to do anything else... That's the thing, there's just lots going on, isn't yeah. there? It's that time of year. Lots of stuff happening on Patreon. Oh, that's right. <laughs> so the pa the daily videos on Patreon are going yeah. well. People are enjoying those. Yeah, they've been so, so if you're fun. watching those, um, uh, yeah, each new uh, quilt block is being greeted with uh, a lot of appreciation. So yeah. thank you very much indeed for that. Nice. Um, but I think that we'll crack on and do this over... There'll be some free time over the holidays, won't yes, there? Just trying to thread my needle with no success. I'm going to concentrate just on talking to you. <laughs> I'll put some B-roll over the top of that. 
birds on the <laughs> Oh, I love it. I just love it. I really do. I've, I'm halfway along. Yeah. <laughs> I have done a few stitches, it's but fine, I just lost it. It's absolutely fine. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, <coughs> so for now, what I'd say then is that we'll see you next time on this series mm. with uh, two finished quilts. Yes. I think the reason why we don't want to rush this is that I want to spend some time teaching you how to do the binding well. Yeah. And the finishing and get yeah. all of that done. And I want to enjoy it, not be like, oh, well, I haven't and finished it that's yet. That's the important yeah. thing, is that we both want to enjoy doing this. Mm. And it feels like a chore if we're racing against the clock. That's yeah. not what this is about at all. No, definitely not. So we will see you next time in this series with um, uh, 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 finishes, hopefully. Mm. Uh, but, uh, but also we'll see you next time. Now, we've got a really interesting video coming next, haven't mm. we? Yeah. So I hope you'll enjoy that one. But that won't be until after Christmas. Yeah. So, it happen yeah, that's right. You know the one I mean, don't I do. you? I <laughs> do. And so have a very, very happy Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. Thanks so much for following along with this quilt project of Anna, Anna and Mine's. Yeah. Is that the right grammar? Mine and Anna's. <laughs> um, and um, I've really enjoyed it. Me too. And, uh, I'm absolutely loving my quilt. I'm so pleased. And so I think there'll definitely be some more quilts in your future. Yes. Well, I'm already planning. Oh, yeah. Two? Four? Oh, four. Yeah, yeah, there's a You've lot. Got four planning. Yeah, I'll tell you about Marvel Stitch. Oh, okay, all right, <laughs> okay. So thanks for watching. Uh, give us a thumbs up if you've enjoyed this video and subscribe and like. That's lovely. And we will see you uh, uh, soon. Should we tell them when? Um, yeah. We will <laughs> see you on New Year's Eve. Yeah. Uh, happy Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. Bye now. Bye. Now try and get that needle threaded, Anna. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe trim the edge off a, a tiny bit. It was a real struggle. Yeah? <laughs> just try and trim the end off a little bit. I will. I was just trying that technique of yours where you put it between <laughs> your finger and your thumb. It really works. No, I've been mastering it at home. Oh, oh dear. Oh dear. <laughs> but it has to be really straight. It has yeah. to be really, and wet, you know? Yeah. And I've just come across a little run uh, where the cat's been asleep and it's got <laughs> cat hair on it. Oh no. Yes, exactly. So this is going to need a wash as soon as it's finished. Yeah. Aha! Got it. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> oh, you're so clever. <laughs> Thank you. Learning so much. <laughs>